Um, yeah, okay. My name is Kelsey Silvera. Um, I live in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, I own and operate a bar here. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. So my situation actually happened to me like when I was much younger. Um, it was a family member, it was actually my father. So I didn't really know about all of it until he was arrested for a different situation, um, a financial crime actually. So that's kind of how it all came to light. But essentially he was like using my social security number to open credit cards and like buy cars and like take leases out. And then like my name ended up on one of his homes. Um, so when he was eventually arrested for money laundering, it was a high profile criminal case that was like all over the internet and stuff. Cause I went to go get gas one day at the gas station and my credit cards wouldn't work like any of them. And I was like very confused. So I called him and he was like, oh yeah, like you're not gonna have any money for a while. Like, um, don't go on the internet. And I was like, don't go on the internet, why not? Um, and so I found out that he was getting charged with money laundering. Um, and so as a result of that, they froze like everyone in my family's accounts when they were going through everything. And then when everything, when they shut down all of his lines of credit, they shut down mine too. So nothing got paid off. So for years and years, I had all these delinquent accounts on like my credit, his cars that never got paid off. Um, so this is this was all when I was 18 and I'm 26 now. And like, I'm still dealing with the repercussions of this. That my stepdad helped me with a lot of it because like, honestly, it's kind of that thing where like, you wish you took like classes on like your credit or like taxes in school. Cause like, they don't teach you that. And honestly, I think it's something that like you're saying, people need to be much more aware of. Cause like, I wouldn't even have thought to check about this stuff. I had no idea that my dad had three cars in my name. Like, and it was just crazy to me that like, I owned like these cars, you know what I mean? Like things like that. And then there was these car payments that weren't being made. And then like, I was getting calls from creditors. Like I, I was like, I don't own that kind of a car. Like you know so those kind of things so like my stepdad had to really help me with a lot of that and like walk me through all of it um there were like also a lot of medical bills he didn't end up paying because like that he was kind of like my source of income at the time or like my parent taking care of me so he basically just let everything go delinquent um so those are like the ones that i'm still dealing with when he finally got officially charged and went to prison was how i was able to get proof and kind of give that to them okay. and that was how i dealt with that Um, so I didn't get a lawyer involved because like we were dealing with all of his lawyers and like getting interviewed by federally, like all of that mess was going on there. So like I said, we didn't want to deal with that on top of it, but I do own a business now. And when I went to buy the business, you have to get a federal tax ID number. And it's like, it's an, um, it's a single member LLC. So everything is linked to me and all the taxes are linked to me. So when I went and got an accountant for that, it kind of became like a whole mess because my credit's so messed up that like. In turn, the business's credit is kind of messed up and it's not the business's fault because the business really has no credit because it just opened less than a year ago. But like until the business gets its own credit, I don't really have any ground to stand on, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's been very frustrating. Like I'm not able to get credit cards for my business. I'm not able to, I mean, I've just now got a credit card for myself for the first time when like I used to have a great credit score and my credit score dropped to like nothing. So. Um, so I still live in an apartment, which like, I would not like to be doing. Like, I wish I was like able to own a home. Um, and then also like on top of that for a long time, like I had to have my grandfather be my co-signer for stuff. And as an adult, like that's very frustrating because I make more than enough money to, you know, take care of myself, or at least I feel that I do. But then when I go to apply to live somewhere, they're like, well, your credit doesn't matter, you know? So, yeah. and it's like, I want to live in a nicer place if I can afford it. But then it's like, I almost get sent to go live like in less nice places because that's the only places that will accept me on my own credit. So it was kind of very frustrating having co-signers for such a long time, like as an independent adult paying all of my own bills. Cause it just doesn't feel that way. And it's, it's kind of embarrassing. It's really humbling getting a car, even like my mother had to be on my car. Um, so that was really frustrating. It's just stuff like that. Like it, it just, you feel like such an adult and like at my age, like you're trying to grow into your own person and like feel complete. And then like, it's just like these little steps back that like this thing is still impacting you like so many years later. The like 
effects financially and everything are finally starting to wear off and like with this business going in a good direction like I feel better about that um so I hope that those don't follow me around forever but I do see like the psychological and the mental like I'm much more careful about like everything that I do I'm very like guarded about everything especially financially So honestly, my normal response would be to get law enforcement involved just because I've dealt with like other situations, not like this, where like lip, that's always my first response, especially like owning a bar. Like that is always the first, you know what I mean? So that would be my first response, number one. And also like speaking to an accountant or someone that deals with this on a daily basis, like my accountant for my business is also a forensic accountant. So like he testifies in court for this kind of stuff. So like that was really helpful for me once I met him, even though it was so much longer down the road, just having him in like my business and like my day-to-day -day life now, like helping me clean up my stuff and like going through everything with me on like a weekly basis and like talking me through things, just kind of educating myself almost, but with his help. I think that that was very helpful because I think that that's a lot of the problem is like people are not educated about this. People don't know to like check your bank statements for like little withdrawals because like people will start by doing that and then they'll take like big chunks of your money, like just little things like that. I mean, you know, and it could be someone you don't know, but just like educating yourself or like being more careful. But yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I would encourage getting law enforcement involved, but just my situation was different at the time.